conflict in the Kasai province of the Democratic Republic of Congo has displaced more than a million people. Fighters have seized control of more towns in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The fighting has forced thousands of people to flee the region. And the Democratic Republic of Congo seems unable to shake free from the cycle of violence. I remember that initial conversation as a staff. What do we do? What do we do with these families? Well, it's a no-brainer. I mean, they're, they're foreigners, and how, what does God say about how we treat foreigners? Um, not to mention, like, if you took the foreign part out, how do we treat our neighbor as we want to be treated? If it were us in a foreign land, what would we want people to do for us? And we tend to think of ministry as this transactional thing, I think, in America. Like, you've, been, you've done your discipleship class, now you're done. And discipleship in Jesus' model is just like people being together. And there's no shortcut for that. Refugees started arriving in Missoula in 2016. Then about a year ago, last summer, so I've been the summer of 2018, there was a huge explosion, is what I call it, of just refugees that came to Missoula, and most of them were Congolese. And the existing Congolese in Missoula invited them to come be part of our church. We truly have felt that God has just placed um, these people in our midst and said here, you know, here, here they are for you to love and to learn from um, and to grow with and to help shepherd. We all know about Congo is a country of ups and downs. Uh, we all know that Congo is a politically is not stable. My life in Congo, um, since when I was young, life it was uh, between gun and knife. I decided to to flew Congo because of insecurity. It took me five years. Three years was so, so difficult. It was not easy. Sleeping was not easy. Nandia nilikuwa wukavu, wukavu, tukapata shida. Pakakuwa habari ya... ya, ya vita. Batu baka uwana sana. Tulipita matatizo mingi kwa hile inchi yetu. Kupitia shida ya ina hakuna upendo paka kuwa ubaguzi. Batu baka uwawa sana. Batu balikufa sana. Mafamilia zilikufa. Nandwe kabidi tukakimbi ya vita. Kaishi mahali panaitwa kambi. Tulifungi wa pale, saa mie nilifungi, tulifungi wa maile lupango, nilimaliza miaka ishirini. Wakati eh, tumetoka goma, tu, eh, tukakimbia kwanza vita, vita njoo ilitutosha goma, tu, tu, tukakimbilia Burundi. Tumefanya miaka karibu kumina ya kakuminanani. Baada ya kufika Burundi tukapokelewa kama vile wakimbizi. Hakuna mkimbizi kuna maisha mazuri. Hawe mkimbizi mwanaishi kambini. Hawe hata mkimbizi mwenye ya naishi katika vijijini. Kuna mkimbizi yote ambaye anatoa katika maisha ukimbizi 
ambaye atasema kama alikuwa vizuri Joba ekabidi sasa bakatufungulia milango ya kusema tukuye America The journey to America it was like a, a dream Ni kwa neema ya Mungu na ndio maana mmetoona tulifika hapa ndani ya nchi hii kwa kifupi ni kama hayo has a long history of missions involvement and that has traditionally meant we send people on missions and God has just sort of flip-flop that model in the last few years of God has brought the world to us it's about how do we equip them to reach their neighbors that are also being relocated here why do you call me good no one is good we have a couple of guys from MAC who have offered to mentor some of the leaders in the um, in the Congolese community, and so they meet on a weekly basis. And then those Congolese leaders, in turn, um, on Sunday morning before the service, are able to explain that to the group as a whole. Say without faith, nothing can make Jesus happy. But um, We've just seen huge, huge growth going on and huge understanding, just their biblical knowledge. On Sunday morning, the Congolese have their own service where they're able to just be a little bit more expressive in their culture, in the way that they worship, in the way that you're teaching. Our heart is never for that to like replace their involvement in the main worship service. Our, our heart really is to have the body of Christ be totally unified. Does anybody know what this is? On Wednesday nights, we have um, sort of an English as a second language class, but I think probably the majority of the ministry, if you want to call it that, is off-site. And it's the, the volunteers and the leaders, Lara and Robin and Doug and Dan McCloy and all these different people that are going off-site, um, ministering to their practical needs. Tunashukuru kwa sababu tangu tumefika kitu cha kwanza Nchi ya Amerika ni nchi nzuri Ile vrema tunasema kama nchi ya Amerika ni nchi nzuri Amen Watakuwa wanapokelea unajua nchi ya wa Marekani iko natupokea inapokea wa, wa Afrika inapokea wa wa, wa wa Arabu inapokea wa Eritrea inapokea kila kabila yote kwa kweli tunashukuru sana kwa kweli tunashukuru kanisa ya Alias Church inajitolea sana kwa ajili ya wakimbizi Tunashukuru sana kwa kanisa. Kanisa kabisa ilitupokea. Ikatushurikia, ikatupa mavazi kwa shida, kwa matatizo elijua. Sijua tunaweza tukasema Mungu ndio atabalipa, si hatuna cha kubalipa. Mungu ndio anaweza kabalipa. Ile tunjo nilikuwa na nani? Nilikuwa nayo ya kuongea. Ninashukuru sana kabisa. <laughs> Mizula Map Church, they welcomed us. Instead of uh, give me fish, he taught me how to fish. That's Mizula Chad did for me. I'm safe. Everything I need I got. So I feel to stay America. The rest of my life. I think when you look at the refugees issue as a whole, it seems so overwhelming. And I remember prior to the Congolese being at MAC thinking, what could I ever do that would impact refugees? 
To have refugees in our midst and in Missoula, it brings their story closer to home so that I can be more empathetic, um, I can be more understanding about it. But I think God also just has allowed us um, to have a little bit of an impact on them. It's really cool to me how God brings his body together. Getting to know these people, not just language or skin color or culture, but their heart has been really valuable because you just see so much commonality. And in a lot of ways, they, they've really caused us to level up as Christians. We can look at the refugee as a person rather than this group, and we can look at the Congolese as individual people rather than just that group that sits over there in that pew. <laughs> then we begin to see them as God created them to be.